welcome to Hank's second session with me and you guys pretty much know the rundown on him already so I'm gonna pick up right where we left off yesterday so I have the stick and we're gonna work on the legs I'm gonna start with touching the hindquarters moving to the leg and then directly touching the leg that used to be a pretty big trigger for him where he would kick out and such um, and it seems to be working through it already and then we're gonna move on to another trigger of his which is going to be putting the saddle pad on and asking him to move out on a line, either walking or trotting, and then having it fall off as he's moving. So kind of desensitizing him to motion above him and, and things falling off while he's in motion. So kind of desensitizing him to um, being in motion, desensitizing in motion, things falling off of him and moving while he's in motion, but let's get started. And I believe yesterday, I just had this all coiled up. I know my camera did run out of storage at one point, so we'll kind of review some of that, but I'm gonna go right away to touch his hip. Good boy. Paying attention to his kind of face cues, his body language. Good boy. Okay, and I'm gonna go right to touching his leg now. Good boy. A little bit lower on it. Good. And then right over to the other side. So a really big thing with me, and either working with a horse that has a history or even a new horse, I don't drill anything on them. So if they do it really well, like once or twice, I kind of move right along. There's no reason to spend a bunch of time doing it. So with a horse that's like super nervous, which I don't think he's super, super nervous just based on his body language, but with one that's very nervous, what you would first do is just touch them with the stick. And then as soon as they kept their body still, you would reward them. So first you would just look for them to be standing still, and then you would be rewarding for the relaxation. Good boy. And with him, he obviously already knows that he's not really supposed to move around much when I'm doing this. Um, he learned that previously already, but now what I'm doing is kind of targeting the relaxation making sure that he knows it's okay, he can be comfortable with it. Good. So he's a little bit distracted, good boy. Good boy. Good. And now I'm gonna bring the energy up a little bit more by taking the string off of this. And right away, going to kind of just tossing it back here, good boy. One more good one. Good boy. Good. So he wasn't super relaxed that time when I, I did it. You can definitely tell, and I'm not sure if you can tell from that far away, but close up you can see that he's still tense and a little bit worried in his face. Good boy, he does a very good job kind of containing all of that. Good. Good boy. And then a little bit on the other side, and that's all I'm going to work on with the legs today. Good boy. So that was one trigger I noticed yesterday, was when I just switched from side to side, good, and had the string or the rope dragging on the ground kind of under his nose he got worried about that so we'll definitely be focusing on that too at some point good boy good
about it. I'm just gonna keep doing it. And I really like here how I keep accidentally bumping one of his front legs. And he's not really responding at all to it. He's not giving any body twitches. Good boy. So a little bit of an exhale there. Good. Significantly better that time. I should wear a GoPro one of these times so then you guys can really see his face and all that I'm reading on it um, when we're doing this because I know from afar it looks like he's standing still, he's tolerating it, he's okay with it and that's just the thing. He is tolerating it but he's working towards being okay with it. So there's a big difference between a horse kind of just taking, um, this isn't flooding but sometimes what people do with horses is flooding which is kind of throwing everything at them at once and they freeze and shut down and um, sure they can tolerate it but they're not accepting it which is kind of the difference so here I'm making sure we get all those checkpoints to make sure that he's really okay with everything so we're gonna move along to the saddle pad now first day where I did a couple of like really small things with him, good boy, um, I already worked on sending him out on the lunge and such, so I know that he's he's pretty good with that, he's confident with it, um, he gave me all the green lights with his body language that he felt comfortable doing it, so I'm not worried too much about refreshing that. Like I say in all my videos, make sure you do everything on both sides. Good. Super. Alright. I didn't share that full first session with you guys, but what I was doing to have him stop lunging instead of yielding his high quarters and asking him to face up is all I would do is drop all of my energy right where I was, good, and kind of wait for him to stop and not get too picky quite yet about how he's facing up with me. Um, and then later on, I'm going to work on having him stop like right on the circle and then stopping and then coming in with a cue. But for right now, I'm not going to put any pressure on to have him stop. I'm just going to take energy away. Okay, so right now I'm going to ask him to move up to the trot and see how he feels about that pad up there. right there just so I can see what I'm working with.
side. Good boy. And fall almost in front of him rather than behind him at all. So we're going to go back to putting it right on again. Good boy. And I'm going to set it up again to fall off. Good hang. Good boy. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Very good. Good. Another really good reaction to that. Super, buddy. I'm going to try to have this go completely up into the trot this time in hopes we'll get kind of a similar way of falling like we did the first time I had to go out. kind of work around what I need as a certain reaction. So what I'm going to do is take the stick and string, tie it to the area where the girth would go through to kind of secure it on, um, and then pull it off so it pulls towards me because if it does fall to the outside and he has a huge reaction, then he could potentially jump in towards me, get in my space, and I don't want to um, create something else with him that he's going to have to work through and think about the saddle pad falling but then being in my space and then I'd have to push him out of my space so for right now I'm going to tie this to the end and see if I can get it to pull off to the inside. But the ideal reaction I'm looking for is either, I'm okay with either way, either for him to stand still and look at it and like slow down or to continue at the same pace going around him. Good boy. So we'll see how this works. with his hind end and got worried about it so I think his flank area may be something that I have to pay attention to but I was really happy with that last reaction good boy so now we'll try it on this off side good boy Good. Very nice. 
Sweet, and if we get it one more time on this side, that's gonna be it for this session. I know, you're flying through it. Good boy. Good. Well, that is going to be it for this session with Hank. I like to keep all of them pretty short and sweet um, and just cover something new each time. So do like a review and then a new thing. And I think what we're gonna work on next is going to be some more desensitization around the legs. So I don't know if that'll involve like a pool noodle or working more ropes around his legs. Um, maybe even like a flag or a plastic bag or something. And then we're gonna get going to putting on a sur single, checking that belly pressure. I probably won't do a flank rope on him. Um, we'll see. Just depends because I do know that eventually he'll be getting ridden western again and those do have rear cinches. I'm in mode of training warm bloods and doing all of the English stuff and prepping them for dressage right now so we don't think too too much about having to prep them for a back cinch but for him I might have to do some prep for that but we'll see. It's gonna be the surcingle first and then we'll work with the pillows that I tie off of the surcingle, kind of preps them for legs and movement in the saddle. And then uh, we'll go from there. But so far, I'm super happy with today's session. You guys can see a little bit more of kind of, he's a horse that internalizes everything and waits up here. And I could definitely see how he could get into a situation where he has all of that internal stuff and then all of a sudden, bam, he explodes, he gets really nervous. And then from there, he may be a horse that's very difficult to get to calm back down and come back to you. So that can be where some of the issue lies. And I'm sure at some point, I will see a little bit more of that. But today you were able to see a little bit of that like humpy re reaction that he has with the saddle pad going over his hind end. But, Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you stay tuned for the next session.